It's a new dawn. It's a new day. Where are you, Dini? Oh, you're there. All right. More boat things to do. Aladino and I just got back to Magic Carpet 2 after being away for several months to reset our visas. All right, we've made it. We're, we're on the American side of things. During the months away, we had spent endless hours thinking through the refit and we'd made some big decisions that we were too timid to make last time around. With clear minds and a clear plan, we set to work. We had some demolition to do. because a lot of the screw heads are covered with epoxy. Is there any reason to save this or can I sort of just smash it apart? Yeah, smash it apart. We'd made our plan, and now we were putting it into action. Last time we were in the States, you may remember that we ripped the fiberglass off the walls in the V-Birth to uncover the balsa insulation underneath. First, we wanted to check the condition of the balsa since we could see patches of discoloration, but we also wanted to renew the fiberglass. It had been applied crudely, with too little resin, leaving a rough and unsealed surface. It was a lot of work, but when we finally refiberglassed, it was so immensely satisfying. Instead of a crude and rough interior, we now had nice smooth walls that would take paint beautifully, and we were satisfied with the condition of the balsa beneath. We had been debating over whether to repeat this treatment over the entire boat. It was so much work, but it was also really, really nice to know that there wasn't rotten wood trapped in our hull, and to have a nicely finished interior. So we decided to bite the bullet. Operation Balsa was a go. We had planned to do a total rebuild of the head all along, so removing the countertop there wasn't a difficult decision. The next step is to cut open the fiberglass layer over the balsa, and since it's painted white here, we really had no idea what the condition of the balsa would be underneath it all. That went poorly? No, 
I don't know. I mean, I got everything off, but I'm disappointed by the amount of moldy rot in the balsa and also disappointed by the fact that some of it actually came off. But also it does look like we should probably replace some of this balsa. Really quick, just because I know I mentioned this a million times, but every time we show something to do with the balsa, we always get questions about it. This balsa is not structural. We don't have a cord boat. This balsa was added as an additional extra for insulation purposes to make the boat a bit quieter and to keep heat in a bit more. But there is one inch of solid fiberglass on the other side of this balsa. No, I'm not exaggerating. There is one inch. We've drilled through it. So with that in mind, like the balsa isn't such an important thing, but it would be nice to have an insulated boat. I guess now we can think about whether we want to use a different insulative material. That remains to be seen. I know this probably seems like a lot. After all the work we did last time, now we're ripping up more stuff. But we felt fresh and full of energy. I didn't want rot in my walls. I wanted to get this done. And meanwhile, Aladino had another project on the go. Something else that we'd been worried about for quite some time. We also have another big project that we're getting ready for, and that is kind of rethinking how we install the rub rail. So of course the rub rail is a sacrificial kind of item that sticks to the outside of the hull so that if you ever bump up against anything with your boat, you hit the rub rail, not the hull. And the way that the rub rails were installed on our Cape George is that everywhere you see those little blue tape marks on the hull was a bolt going through, holding the rub rail in place, and that bolt went through to the blocks on the other side. So they were bolted through the blocking. Now, we're going through all this effort of fixing the beams, replacing all of the blocks, rebuilding and redesigning the bulwarks so that these issues of rot don't happen again in the future. But we also think that the way that the rub rail is installed is another really big potential area for water to get in, rot the blocking, thereby rotting the deck beams, creating all these problems that we've gone to all this effort of fixing. So we don't want to do that. And especially for something which should really be considered a sacrificial part of the boat, we don't think it's worth jeopardizing a very important structural part of the boat. So basically what we're doing is you can see Dini has put tape over all of the bolt holes that previously held the rub rail. So we're going to be closing all of those. Then we're going to reinstall the rub rail using some epoxy and much fewer bolts. So maybe even like four. We'll see how few we can get away with really. But like I said, it's not worth jeopardizing the boat for the rub rail. Now, the other options could be, you know, putting it a little bit higher or putting it a little bit lower. Higher doesn't work because then it doesn't um, actually protect the hull, just the way that the hull curves out. And lower just looks weird. We did actually sort of hold it up there to see. Now, the other option that some Cape Georges do is they move it just a little bit lower and that doesn't look too weird, but then you're screwing it into the beam shelf, which almost seems more problematic in a way because if you've got water getting into your beam shelf that's really hard to get rid of because I mean the beam shelf is laminated and everything is sitting on it so that really want to be avoided. All right so that is the next project. The first step as always was to scuff up the fiberglass around the holes for proper adhesion and next would fill them with epoxy and add a small square of fiberglass over top. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are a lot of things happening in the boat shed right now.
And Eladino, what are you working on today? Um, I have to undo something I did previously, and that is how the chain locker drains. I made a hole into it because I thought it would go into the head and drain into the shower sump. Instead, I want to not have it move underneath our V-berth all the way to the head, so I am closing that hole again. Already? Fixing old mistakes. No, just a change of plan. Meanwhile, I had a different project lined up for the day. So today, I am going to be working in the saloon, dismantling the saloon furniture, the berths, in order to do the same treatment as I did in the head, having a look at the condition of the balsa, replacing some if necessary. And then once we've opened everything up, we can go ahead and order new balsa or foam. We've got some research to do there. are you doing today? Um, I'm just checking on what I did yesterday which was closing the through holes in the head but yeah these are done it's just a little chilly still so I'm just setting up uh, heaters and uh, plastic tarp so that it cures properly. I of course also have a project for today the work in the saloon continues. Wake up, top of the morning, the bacon is crispy, the coffee is pouring, my meditation is peeling an orange, the bank says I'm already scoring.
cold in the workshop this morning. It is, yeah. It's beautiful nights with starry skies, but pretty chilly. Yeah. We've been considering hooking up that big heater in there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which well, we, we might will require some work, though. Yeah, if we get this going, it's oh. going to be some serious heat in here, but really it's not hooked up, so. It looks like a workshop stove. It's giant. So because it's cold out, we're able to just put on a whole bunch of layers and make do with it. But one thing that it does make quite difficult is fiberglassing because epoxy doesn't like to be pulled and it doesn't cure properly if it gets too cold. So we've been using little space heaters, making little makeshift plastic tents, hoping that things cured okay. But one thing that we weren't able to make like a really satisfactory tent for is all these holes on the rub rail because it's just so spread out. So we're hoping that it cured properly. We did do it on a warmer day. So now it's time to take off the peel ply and see how it turned out. I'm not too worried. We put a plastic sheet over the area and we blasted the heaters inside. So it should be good to go now, but it is three days after, not right away the next day like we normally could. Another challenge with fiberglassing in the cold though is just the viscosity of the epoxy makes it really hard to saturate the cloth, so it just takes longer. This is peel ply, a material that you can stick on top of wet epoxy so that it dries with a nice textured finish and you don't have to sand it afterwards. It's a nice time saver. I'm pretty pleased with the result. All right, the huge saloon refit is still underway. Aladino is grinding the starboard side at the moment. I just finished pulling the fiberglass off the walls. Now he's getting it ready to re-fiberglass over it. We found several more rotten spots in the balsa, so we're gonna be replacing the balsa. That's on order, it should be here soon. Then we can re-fiberglass everything up and start constructing a beautiful saloon. Yes, we had ordered more balsa. After talking about it, we decided it didn't make sense to replace the rotten sections with foam, even if modern foams are better insulators and don't rot. To really get better insulative properties, we'd have to replace all the balsa with foam, and that was hours of work and thousands of dollars that we didn't think was necessary. The balsa will already provide more insulation than we're used to, and plus it has the added benefit of providing additional structural stiffness to the hull. And it's not that expensive. We're going to replace balsa with balsa, and we're going to make sure it's well sealed. So it has been three days of torture the last three days, but it is quite rewarding. I went at it with the grinder, which was incredibly tedious, and it makes a huge mess. But it's so rewarding because you do get results quickly. We are already very close uh, to getting this sealed and nice again. It just takes so much longer with the sander. So as you can see, uh, there is two spots where the balsa was rotten. Maya already prepared it on this side and we ordered some more balsa. And on this side, we still have to cut out the rot. I still have to get at the corners with the Dremel, uh, do nice coves everywhere and then uh, use a bit of filler. And when the surface is smooth and the temperatures are a bit warmer, we will apply a new sheet of biactual uh, fiberglass with epoxy and uh, ultimately paint it and uh, yeah pretty excited for it 
And then up in the head, a lot has also happened here. I didn't finish scraping the wall because to be honest, after doing this much, my shoulders were killing me. And the next day my shoulders were so sore that I just spent all day editing videos. But yeah, I'll get back to this pretty soon. And we've also removed a lot of rotten balsa from the head. There was quite a bit here, which I guess makes sense because there was a shower here before. So this area was probably damp more than the other areas. Aladino closed up the two through hulls. Feels great. We've got a lot done. This still needs to be grinded like Aladino did in the saloon. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but then we can add some more balsa and close it up. I'm really happy about our progress this week. And by the way, this has actually been a week's worth of work in real time to pull everything apart take away the balsa, take away the fiberglass, grind it down, close up the holes on the rub rail. So you are kind of following us in real time at the moment. And I have to say that I feel like this week was amazing. First week back and we really went at it. I think we have a lot of excitement to be back at the project. And this whole balsa thing is one of those things that has sort of been niggling in the back of my head since we got this boat because there was clear signs that it was rotting in a lot of sections and I just hated the idea of having rotting balsa in our boat even though I know it's not structural and it wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world if we had left it I just I don't know it was eating at me on the flip side I knew it was going to be a hellish job to tear everything out and get at the balsa and replace the rot so there was kind of this constant war going on in my head for the few months that we've been away, but I'm glad that we came back and tackled it with fresh exuberance and yeah, so that's pretty good. So yeah, Dean, how do you feel about the first week back? What oh, your... excellent. Yeah. yeah, we've been so productive that I need a Sunday, even though it's Tuesday now. <laughs> the nice... I just know it's hard to work around things. So, I mean, now we came at it with knowing we we want to get things done. So we have to rip things out to get it done. Yeah. And coming at it with this mindset, you rip things out right away. And then you can also continue and do things right away. Yeah, I'm glad we had the time away from the boat actually to make a lot of these hard decisions. Because when we were here last time, we were like, oh, but let's not rip things up in this saloon. At the same time, we weren't very happy about the way that the cities were constructed and the way that the hatches were constructed. It was really an unfortunate design. So we made the decision to just do it once, do it right. Totally. I'm happy about that. And the most limiting factor now is the temperature, because otherwise yeah. if the ball so whenever it arrives, we just have to uh, glue it in place and then it's almost ready for the new sheet of fiberglass. And after yeah. that, you quickly put on a new top and the sides and um, the missing cabinetry. But um, yeah, this has only been a side gig for me that you've kindly invited me to. Um, I will uh, focus on closing the decks uh, soon here as well. So we just want to say thank you so much for watching. We really, really appreciate having you guys here. It definitely gives us a bit of extra push to know that we have an audience rooting for us and wanting to see progress as much as we do. So thanks so much for, Absolutely. for that. Thank you. And an extra big thanks to our patrons who make the, all of these episodes possible. Uh, we really appreciate your support, and this wouldn't be happening if it weren't for you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you. And an extra big thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen. Uh, these folks really go the extra mile every week and every month to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced. <laughs> you know it by heart now. And we'll see you all in the next, next episode. episode.